with the establishment of a number of intergovernmental institutions and mechanisms. SARC is perhaps the most relevant platform where member states may engage in addressing common issues facing our countries, build confidence and ensure conducive environment for peaceful development and coexistence. Today, as we mark the 34th Charter Day, all of us must be proud of the significant achievements SARC has, has made over the years. This is also a befitting occasion for all of our countries and institutions to reaffirm their commitment to the objectives and principles enshrined in the Charter for the common good of the people that SARC represents. I take this occasion to thank the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan for excellent arrangements and hosting this event today and wish all the dignitaries here a joyful day. Thank you. Good morning to all, all of you. Excellencies, members of the diplomatic corps, uh, officers of uh, different SARC activities, uh, organizations, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It's a big honor for me to participate today for the 34th SARC Charter Day because this is the first time I am uh, participating. As the president of uh, SARC CCI, uh, this is one of a very important uh, gathering that we have today because this is the initiation of SARC Chamber of Commerce and Industry. SARC started 34 years back, and SARC Chamber of Commerce and Industry started 25 years back. Now we are celebrating 25th anniversary in this year. And I am very happy 
that uh, Pakistan became my second home because of Saak. Because our head office is in Islamabad. And I must thank the uh, government of Pakistan giving us a huge support for us to construct our uh, headquarters for all SAC eight countries. And uh, we will be uh, inaugurating the building uh, during the first four months of uh, uh, next year. And it will be a, a very important place for all the SAC, SAC activities to happen, uh, focusing Pakistan. And also there is a very important other matter with Pakistan because the leader for the SARC Chamber of Commerce and Industry for 2020 and 2021 is my good friend, Mr. Iftikhar Ali Malik, is from Pakistan. So uh, when it is SARC CGI, Pakistan is a very, very important place for the next five years, for sure. As business leaders, within our uh, SARC region, we are trying our level best to develop our economies in our capacities. But it is not possible for only businessmen to do this one. When SAC inaugurated with the blessing of all the leaders of all eight countries, they understood in down the line that the economic development cannot take up without the private sector. That is why it was arranged and supported for SAC Chamber of Commerce and Industry to inaugurate 1993. So we have passed 25 years now. If we look back, what we have done so far, it's a huge work that we have done. But by our hearts, we all know it is not enough. We, in the SAC Chamber of Commerce and Industry in our SAC region, South Asian region is going to be the most important region in the world for the next decade. Because we are the eight countries that we have the highest economic growth in the world at the moment. The GDP growth in our region is averagely 6.5%, which is remarkable when you compare with even European countries. Some of our countries like Pakistan, uh, sorry, uh, pa uh, Bangladesh and India, Bangladesh is having 7.5% approximately and India is having 7.25%. So this opportunity, how we can maximize to bring development to all our nations is the main focal point of SAC Chamber of Commerce and Industry. So I take this opportunity to invite our very important uh, members who are in front of me, our diplomatic corps, to take this opportunity to make the bridge between the private sector and the government and support us to minimize our barriers within us. Now, why we can't develop? We are only in a land area of 3% of the whole world but we are 24% of the world population. And most of us, our population, 54% of our population are working class. And if you take the total world young population, 29% of them are living with us. Why can't we use these capacities to enhance our economies? We all are having a very bad habit criticizing ourselves. We have not done this one. We have that barricade. We have this barrier. We have political barriers. We have uh, security barriers and all these things. I think now it is the time that we have to stop criticizing ourselves, but to talk about our strengths, our capacities, our energies, and to see how can we synchronize all together and maximize this one for the benefit of our our nations. I think the main objective of forming SARC is that. So all of us have to ask from our own heart whether we are contributing towards this. We know what are our problems within us. Why we can't do inter-trade? We have 
enough barricades within us. Connectivity is one problem. And other disasters that we are inherited for uh, our region because of the geographical location and also uh, the, uh, the, the elevations uh, that we have in, within us. And most importantly, about more than 25% poor population. But we are very strong with our education. Our working class is servicing for the whole world. If you go and see any part of the world, South Asians are everywhere. And they are dominating in certain areas. When we can bring them back to our countries and make use of them for benefit of our countries is the one that we have to think in the future. So I take this opportunity to invite all the diplomatic uh, uh, core our ambassadors and our high commissioners. Let us sit together. We are going to form a lot of uh, discussion forums in the future by organizing by SAC Chamber of Commerce and Industry to bring common discussions with the government political leaders, diplomatic core, and the business leaders to discuss how we can make use of this to clear our difficulties to develop our nations. We are having bilateral agreements within us, but none of them are performing as our wish. Why those are not happening is small barriers. I don't see big barriers within us. These are very simple. Sark Chamber of Commerce and Industry is ready to give the leadership. And we are confident that we can do because Sark Chamber of Commerce and Industry is representing all eight countries, the federation of chambers of commerce and industries of each, each country. So every country, the total business community is representing in SAC chamber. So the leaders in SAC chamber, our vice presidents representing all countries are the leaders of, of their countries. So we are capable enough to go and lobby our cases with our political leaders, but we need to have the connect connection between our political leader and the other country which we are going to clear the difficulties, that relationship is up to our high commissioners. So requesting that and expecting your fullest cooperation in the future with our old SARC organizations like, like SARCO and all other organizations and our diplomatic corps and the government officials we are expecting to give much more stronger, more vibrant energy to, to our nations to make sure that the next decade is making use of for South Asian countries to grab our portion of future expected development in the world economy. Because we all know Asia is going to take the power of the world within next two decades. So where we are standing is Asia. So we have to take the maximum portion of our nation. So uh, expecting that support from all our governments, diplomatic corps, and the uh, business society, I wish SAC to perform much more better, much more stronger, and bring economic development, social development, and brotherhood within us fast as possible. I wish all the very best for Sark. Thank you. Distinguished guests, my colleagues, it is indeed an honor and pleasure for me to welcome you all. On behalf of SARC, the lead role played by MUFA in organizing this event shows commitment of government of Pakistan to the noble cause of helping people of the region for which SARC was created. Ladies and gentlemen, SARC was created in 1985 with a common resolve for socio-economic uplift of the people of the region with seven members. With the induction of Afghanistan, now SARC is eight member community eight-member eight family. Saki steadily 
moving towards fulfilling the cherished expectation of over 1.8 billion people living in this region. It has extended its wings after and with a long journey of over three decades to enhance cooperation in energy, poverty alleviation, agriculture, rural development, science and technology, trade and investment, connectivity, environment, and natural disaster control and management. All these areas of cooperation are heavily dependent on energy. Hence, realizing this important fact and role of energy, it was decided at the 12th SAC summit to undertake a study on South Asian energy cooperation, including the concept of SARC energy ring. In the subsequent summit, it was decided to establish SARC energy center in Islamabad. It was accordingly launched and started functioning in 2007, 2008. During a short period of time, the SARC Energy Center has aggressively taken up the implementation of intergovernmental framework agreement leading to materialize the SARC Energy Ring aimed at improving the lives of people of South Asia through providing sustainable energy access. Last three years program activities of SARC Energy Center comprise several interventions which includes sharing, uh, knowledge sharing workshops, training workshops, create awareness among the people, dispute resolution mechanism with reference to framework agreement. SARC Energy Center has been able to sensitize the governing board to prioritize SARC Energy Ring in the best interest of our people. As a skipper of the SARC Energy Center, I believe that we need to vigilantly pursue strategic program activities such as regional power projects and its potential exploitation of non-conventional energy resources, energy conservation, energy efficiency, with special reference and preference to renewables and environment. Excellencies, it is undeniable fact that regional cooperation in all possible areas, in all possible ways, can lead to, uh, lead to economic prosperity of 34% people, 34% population of the world living in this region. Yes, South Asian region has and is presently confronting with issues and problems. However, these are there are potentials and opportunities too. With our collective efforts, we can avail ourselves of these opportunities by putting consideration of socio-economic development first and differences aside. Common problems, threats, and abundant resources available within the region can unite us economically and in the larger interest of our people. But all members of all member states have to move forward with full sincerity. I repeat, Madam Secretary, that we have to move forward with, fill, with full sincerity and commitment to the cause. One step forward can make the difference. In the end, ladies and gentlemen, let us recommit ourselves to strengthen SARC to meet the growing expectation of our people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim On behalf of the uh, SAC Arbitration Council, SAC Energy Center, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, who are co-hosts of this today's event, I'd like to welcome you all, excellencies, members of the diplomatic corps, ladies and gentlemen. I also like to take this opportunity to thank the chairperson of the SAC Chamber of Commerce who has come all the way from Sri Lanka to be with us today. It is truly an opportunity for us to hear from him. 
and I thank him for his very motivational speech on how we can move forward in the area of, of trade and commerce. I'd like to also register here my special, uh, uh, our special thanks on behalf of all member states of, uh, of SARC to Nepal. The High Commission of Nepal is here for hosting SARC and for providing this special service, this opportunity for SARC to be able to grow within um, Nepal itself. Thank you, Nepal, for all the efforts you make in trying to move the agenda of SARC. We have ups, our ups and downs, but SARC is there to stay. And it is my great pleasure to, to commemorate the 30th, 34th SARC chartered, charter day. We celebrate today the spirit with which our leaders, entrusted by the people of South Asia, worked 34 years ago towards the adoption of the SARC Charter and the subsequent establishment of the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation. It was the vision of our leaders to commit to engage in a collaborative regional effort geared towards delivering on the promise of a better life for the people of South Asia. I think this is one thing that must hold us together and continues to hold us together. And it is on this basis that we have the great pleasure of also having with us the observers of SARC, who, who will, whose presence here today and whose presence as observers ensures and strengthens SARC. While we celebrate today, we must not forget that SARC could not become the engine of socioeconomic development as was originally envisaged. But what has been sent, said by the president of the SARC chamber today gives us great hope on how we can move forward on some, in some areas in particular. Uh, we must admit that it, SARC has fallen behind on the commitments and promises that we set out to achieve, progress and prosperity for the common good of our people. We must not, however, uh, lose this perspective and we must continue to work on it. The commemoration of the Charter Day reminds us of the need to respond positively and effectively to the growing and multifaceted challenges strewn along the roads of prosperity, development and peace in the South Asian region. South Asia being a home, as has been said repeatedly, of a large number, 1.7 billion energetic, talented, educated human resource, and abundantly blessed with natural resources, must not be left behind. Although during the recent decades, the governments of SARC states have focused on poverty alleviation for a huge number of people in our region, life remains far from satisfactory. We have therefore an enormous responsibility to deliver on this front. As a founding member, Pakistan stands steadfastly by the principles of the SARC Charter. Pakistan continues to believe in the viability of SARC. We are convinced that only through adhering to the principles of sovereign equality and mutual respect among member states would we be able to guide SARC to our cherished goal of a prosperous and developed South Asia region? It is in the same spirit that Pakistan had made preparations for hosting the 19th SARC summit in Islamabad. We look forward to the hosting of the, summit, of the 19th SARC summit, and um, we believe that there's much that we can do in this context as well. The recent inauguration of the Kartarpur Corridor for Sikh pilgrims is another great manifestation of the importance that Pakistan attaches to regional integration and to people-to-people -people contacts. I believe that all we have agreed upon and endorsed over the past 34 years must be transformed into action across all main focal areas of cooperation, included including the economy, trade, development of infrastructure, energy, energy including renewable energy, environment and regional connectivity. 
we have the honor to host the energy, SARC Energy Sector is, um, Center in Islamabad. And we continue to believe that energy provides a very important link for the entire region and that we need to work together to strengthen the center. And may I add that the last time we had this event, I had a conversation with uh, the chair of the energy center and requested advice on how we can use renewable energy for this ministry and this building. We still await your response. So we look forward to getting more information in this regard. But certainly that's an area where we can all work together on maximizing efforts in using renewable energy. In the end, I'd like to felicitate all of us who are here, as well as the people across South Asia on the occasion of the Sark Charter Day. I also take this opportunity to reaffirm the commitment of the government and people of Pakistan to the objectives of Sark and our journey together towards achieving our shared objectives under this umbrella. Let us resolve to work with dedication and commitment to transform the lives of our people. This is a commitment that has been repeatedly stated by the Prime Minister of Pakistan, a commitment that he very strongly feels about. And we hope that we can all work together. I'm sure all the leaders of the region have a similar commitment to their own people. I hope we can work together to achieve this commitment. Because unfortunately, South Asia continues to be one of the regions where poverty prevails in large numbers, and where we need to address these issues collectively. I thank you very much, and I wish Sark the very best and all success in its endeavors. Thank you. of the SARC member states and SARC observer states and also the heads of SARC bodies. Please come on stage for this cake cutting. Thank you, everyone. And now I would request uh, the honorable guests to please uh, proceed for the refreshments. And, uh, but uh, let's have uh, a group photograph here, please, first. Thank you. 